Hey guys, uh, one quick question for all of you and take this as your DJ challenge. Understand this guys, you are trying to add a new column inside the table and once you add the new column, uh, understand the data blocks are having fragmented space. I mean it's not having a space which will allow you to insert the records or store the records but the data block has a lot of fragmented, fragmented space. Now if you combine the fragmented space, definitely you will get a lot of space to store the new records. Now you tell me this, if data blocks are having fragmented space, you add a new column and you are inserting the records, will Oracle fragment the blocks, create feed space and then insert the new records or will Oracle completely allocate a new data block? Take this as your DP challenge, comment below this video and meanwhile let us start our show. Welcome back guys to the next episode of Daily DBA and let us start our show directly with the first question of the day. Can I use flashback to recover a data block? Come on, you have to think in a completely different way. Flashback is to roll back, accept it. And you're saying a data block got corrupted. So you would like to, like, I mean, I'm just guessing. So a data block corrupted like two days back, okay? and you want to flash back to X amount of time, like before two days. But the question is, how would you get to know that the data block got corrupted two days back? And by the way, you cannot use flashback on a particular data block uh, and can kind of like recover it. No, it's not possible. The only way you can recover a corrupted data block if you want to use flashback is to perform the flashback database. But the biggest problem is when you perform the flashback database entire database goes back in time and when the entire database is going back in time understand you're losing all the changes that are made inside the database by all the users and i hope as a dba you would not want to kind of like lose all that data right so flashback is not at all an option to recover a data block never ever say that you would like to use flashback in order to recover a data block and I 100% understand this question might have been asked to you in an interview because sometimes even I ask this question now to answer the other part like how do you recover a data block I'll give you simplest example and this is the traditional method everybody works and everybody like goes with this option and it has been uh, with Oracle for years like even the previous versions of Oracle, we used to use the same method to perform a data block recovery. And it is simple and straightforward. What you do is you have the data file where the block is corrupted. Okay, so you have one data file. In this data file, one block is corrupted. What you do is you restore the particular data file which has the data block corrupted from your previous backups. And then, so this is current time, right? and this is the backup time when you had taken the backup of the data file so what you do you restore the data file from the latest backup that you have and then you start applying the archive logs onto the data file and bring it to the current time that way it is the simplest method to recover the data block now i know a lot of you might be commenting below this video saying like hey Aaron, we can also recover the data block using the standby database now understand not all the databases will have uh, physical standby configured in those kind of situations this is the only way you can recover the data block so what you do is restore the data file from the latest backup apply the archives and your data block recovery will be done all in all flashback is not for data blocks recovery and all it is for transactional recovery or let's say a user issued a wrong query towards the database and now you want to take the database back in time or the table or the transaction back in time right so all in all to answer this question can i use flashback to recover a data block no it's not possible yes you can use entire database flashback but that will create a problem you might lose all the transactions inside the database now that being said let's move on to the next question how can we significantly reduce the backup size? All right, guys, I think you all might know a lot of 
answers to this question like you can compress the backup you can kind of like uh, uh, probably use advanced compression in the backup and all those kind of ideas right but i will not talk about those kind of ideas i'll actually talk about a completely new idea which i think most of you or a lot of you might not even uh, know about it now this was something which we had done for a client okay and i'll share this with all of you now but to understand this you have to first understand what kind of objects inside the database take space so if you look at a granular level or i think sorry if you look at the database from a high level perspective you will observe that the 50% of the database space is taken by tables and the other 50% space is taken by indexes right so or most of the times what happens is indexes might take even more space so like 60% of the database space is taken by indexes and 40% uh, space is taken by the tables right happens and uh, this is common practice so if you kind of like audit your database so you will find like most of the times uh, the indexes might take at least 50% space or 50% or more and the table or the data inside tables will take 50% or less space right that is the total space of the database now what happens is guys understand this when you are taking backups what is happening you are taking backup of the entire database so you are taking backup of the tables the users data and you are also taking backup of the indexes right now let's take you have backups getting triggered like every day so how many times you are taking the backups of the indexes right it becomes a question mark now understand if this is a data warehouse or reporting database where you store the data only once and then you are taking backups again and again right so you have a history database where you have history tables one time storage indexes will be built once right now you are taking backup again and again again and again so understand how many times indexes are being backed up right and there will not be much change into the indexes now you might argue we all can argue on this and there are again thousands of uh, scenarios within this one but let me give you another perspective to this uh, idea so now understand what if you keep all the indexes into one table space okay and you keep all the data or the tables into one table space and when you write your backup strategy you are only backing up the data tables or data table spaces where you have tables and user data but you are not taking the backup of indexes so the question is how you are saving the space as i mentioned 50% of the space will be taken by indexes right and 50% will be taken by data or the users table so you are always backing up the users data that is you are already backing up 50% or less size of the database every time and that's how you significantly reduce the backup size now coming to one more point you might now say okay arun you are saying not to back up the indexes and we don't back up the table spaces where indexes are kept now when there is a problem inside the database how do we recover see you have the user data right so you restore the user data and for indexes you just recreate them why do you want to restore the indexes from the backup right i mean give it a thought we have implemented this strategy on one of the clients and it was working awesome what happens is in this kind of scenario let's take if you go with this one again as i mentioned guys be very careful there are thousands of yes no scenarios within this one but it depends where you can implement this idea or not so if there is a client where there is no much changes in the indexes what you do is you separate the indexes from the user data you kind of continue to back up the user data and whenever there is a database recovery if ever involved what you do is you restore the data tables and then you rebuild the indexes right this is more simple when compared to storing the indexes or backing up the indexes again and again and wasting the disk space this is one of the best ideas that i can give you but you have to audit your database in terms of whether you can use this strategy or not all right so this is the best idea where you can completely or significantly reduce the database backup size to almost 50% 
and on top of that use compression arm and compression arm and advanced compression be careful for arm and advanced compression you need to have the license okay so if you use arm and compression on top of this strategy definitely the backup size would be probably you can achieve a 70 to 80 percent reduction in the size of the database backup now that being said let's move on to the next question can a user change their own password in oracle why not it's simple so as a sysdba user how would you change password for the other user alter user username identified by give the new password let's take you login as the hr user right so you can issue an alter user command but the username should be the one that you're logged in so let's say i'm logged into the oracle database as hr user and i want to change the password i would use the command alter user hr because the hr user has permission to change its own password but hr user might not have permission to change the password for the other users right so alter user hr identified by whatever the new password you want to give very simple straightforward what i would want is the junior dbas or anyone who is trying to learn the oracle database i want you to practice this try this on your uh, sample machines or your virtual machines and let me know the answers below in the comments were you able to change the password of the user with which you connected to the database that being said let's move on to the next question if we roll back to a save point are the undo blocks generated after the save point released right away of course see when you perform a rollback save point or commit i mean i don't know if you guys have followed one of my videos on oracle architecture you know the i mean one important point you have to remember about the commit and rollback is you cannot run one command above the other so for example if you issue commit you cannot run rollback above commit or if you issue rollback you cannot issue commit over rollback like you can technically but it won't make sense right so you can't say like you commit the transactions and now you say like oh no you know i was supposed to roll back and then you perform the rollback it will not work right so you have to be very careful the same way looking at this question if you roll back to a save point so there was a save point and you have already rolled back to that save point right so like there is nothing like you can come back to the current state once rollback is issued done everything is released everything goes off that being said the undo block generated after the save point release right away 100 percent because see you have already rolled back to the save point and nothing is left after the save point so all the undo blocks will be 100 percent released in this case right that being said let's move on to the last question of the day does the resource role already have unlimited table space privilege or i have to grant it separately of course by default the resource role will have unlimited table space but guys remember first things first from i think 12c release one this has been discontinued so unlimited table space quota is like that permission is not given to the resource role and couple of things you need to like remember as a dba is do not grant this resource role to any user and guys these i mean these roles were created long back for 9 9 10g systems right but from 11g 12c versions the kind of strategy that you should have is a different one when you create a user first of all forget about user whenever you are developing a database the database tables are being developed you go through the database design phase right after the design phase when you create the users before creating the application users you have to create application roles okay so each application role will have its own permissions and then you give those roles or assign those roles to the application users right that's how it should work so what you have to focus more on is or what you have to focus more on is creating the application related resources so what you have to focus more on is creating roles specific to the application 
So define your application, what all permissions are required to the application user. So you create those roles inside the database and then assign those roles to the application users. Do not, I specify it strictly, do not use the default roles which are created inside the Oracle database. The resource role or any other role which you assign, these were created long back for 9i or 10g systems. So right now from 12c version i think from 12c release one it won't even allow you to have unlimited table space to the user to which you assign the resource role be careful as i mentioned do not do not use it okay create application specific uh, roles and assign those roles to the application users that being said let's wind up today's episode and move on to the bonus question All right, guys, so I got this one call from a DBA. I think I should call um, the DBA as immature DBA. The reason is like, uh, you know, like DBA Genesis provides remote um, DBA support to clients across the globe. Now, this person calls me and actually she was a lady. So she calls me and she says, you know what, Arun, we are supposed to uh, set up the uh, data guard for one of our primary databases and I would need your team's help. So I said, why not? We can definitely set up the data guard for your primary database or the production database. So the call was uh, moving forward and now DBA Genesis provides support into uh, like two packages. One is the project wise support, the another one is hourly billing. Now, because if we go for project wise billing, the problem is the amount might be huge and uh, the lady she was not comfortable with that uh, pricing package and then she said you know i would like to go with hourly billing and i said all right we are perfectly fine we'll go with hourly billing and uh, then she said like uh, okay so for setting up the data guard i think it should not take more than uh, one hour right so i'll process the payment for one hour billing and uh, you guys can start off with the project now the funny thing is uh, okay don't worry i'm not keen to explain you guys the packages that we provide the important thing that i want to tell you guys is and this is how the call went i told the dba right like how do you guarantee like you all are dbas right who all are listening to this show we all know that oracle is a complex stuff and you can't guarantee anything or put a time to any kind of activity saying like okay this activity can be done within one hour right and it's highly impossible because you cannot guarantee Oracle is designed such and every Oracle environment is different. And so many times if you have worked on the production database, so production upgrade might take exactly 45 minutes. But if you perform the same upgrade onto a test database, it might take like 20 minutes. It happens. Variables, variations inside the Oracle database are everywhere, right? So it took so much time to explain this DBA that it's not possible you what you're saying is not at all guaranteed because we don't know what oracle or when oracle gives you a surprise right when we work on a system when we touch the server when we log into the oracle database when we start working on an activity that's when oracle gives us the surprise that being said guys the main thing that i want to conclude out of this call is whenever you're working with any clients or your managers or uh, anyone like where you're providing the Oracle database support. Be very careful. Never ever put hard deadlines to any activity. Don't ever assume saying like, okay, Oracle upgrade takes so and so time, Oracle uh, like uh, data guard setup will take so much time, migration will take so much time. No, Oracle like be very careful. Oracle is full of surprises and anytime you put a timeline and guys i would like to actually know from you how many times it happened with you that you estimated one time with oracle but actually it got extended put the comments below this video one learning from this bonus question is never put a hard timeline to any of the oracle activities oracle gives you a lot of surprises that being said i'll see you all in the next episode till then take care bye, -bye.